Hey, and welcome back to another video. In today's tutorial, we're going to cover off how to create beautiful maps in Python using GeoPandas. So this map over here is actually what we're going to be creating throughout this tutorial. So let's dive right in and get started with loading some data in our required libraries. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is actually download the data. And all of this data is available through the American, uh, through the US uh, census.gov website. And I'll provide the links to the data in the description below. So we're going to want to download the actual population total changes per state uh, between 2020 and 2021, as well as these shape files here. And while there are different ways of getting shape files, getting them from official sources can often be a really free and great way to be able to access these data sets. So once you've downloaded the data, what we're going to want to do is actually store it in a folder structure like the one that I have laid out here. So we have our Python file here called mapping.py. We have our population estimates here. And then in our shapefiles folder, we have all of the different files that are contained within that zip file. It may seem counterintuitive at first to need anything beyond the shape file here but all of these different files feed into it. So keep track of all of them and keep them in a directory nearby. So the libraries that we're gonna be working with here are pandas for managing our data set. We're gonna be working with geopandas, which allows us to work in pandas data frames, but with geospatial dimensions, as well as matplotlib in order to be able to visualize our resulting maps. So let's go ahead and import these. So we're gonna import geopandas using the alias gpd. Then we're gonna import pandas using the alias pd. And finally, we're gonna import matplotlib pyplot using the alias plt. So the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is actually create some references to our data. So the easiest way that we can do this is just by creating some variables that contain uh, the paths to our data. So what we can do here is create a variable called data path, which just contains the string path file, uh, path to the file itself. And then we're gonna wanna create another one for our shape. And in this case, we're gonna be loading in this shape file here. Now at this point, it's still important that this shape file is stored in the same directory as all of the other files. So we're gonna take this piece here, copy it as a path name, and just paste it in here. So the first thing that we're gonna to want to do actually is figure out what our data looks like. And so we can load our data into a data frame here called df, and we're gonna use the pandas read CSV function and just read in our data file here. Now let's print out our data frame to see what it looks like. So we can see here that we actually have a number of truncated columns, but we can see that we only have four columns available. And so what we can do with this actually is just take a look at what columns we have here. So what we can see here is that we actually have four columns. We have this geographic area name, which represents our state. And we have this base population on April 1st, 2020. And then we have consistent July 1st populations for 2020 and 2021. So really we don't care about the second column here. So we can actually just rename our columns first and then drop that second column by name. And the way that we can do this is by accessing the columns attribute here. We're gonna pass in a list here. So the first column we know is the state. We can call this whatever we want. We'll just call it ignore. And then we'll call these here population 2020 and population 2021. So at this point now, we can actually go ahead and drop that column uh, ignore because we don't need it. And the way that we're doing this is using the drop method here, which accepts an argument called columns, which expects a list of values here for the columns to drop. So now when we go ahead and print out our data frame, we can see here that we now just have a very neatly labeled data frame that has the state, uh, the population for the two years. Now you may recall from the map that we're working with that we actually want to create the 
a measure of how much the population has changed. So let's take a look at whether or not our data types for this are correct. So we can do this using the info method. And when we run this, we can see actually that the state is an object, which is fine, but both the population for 2020 and for 2021 are strings as well. So we need to first be able to convert these into values. So the way that we can do this is actually by using uh, first string uh, transformations, using the string replace method to be able to get rid of those commas. And then we can use the as type method to convert it into integers. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're gonna access here the population for 2020. And we're just gonna apply here the string.replace method. And what we're gonna do is pass in a comma, and then we're gonna replace it with nothing. And then we're gonna chain in the as type method and pass in int. And we can actually just go ahead and copy this down and simply transform the 2021 column in the same way. So now when we run this, we can see here that we actually have these values now formatted as integers, which means we can actually divide the values up. So let's go ahead and create a new column here. And we're gonna call this DF population change. And what we're gonna do is we're first gonna subtract the population of 2021 from uh, the population of 2020 and divide this by the population of 2021. So this is gonna return a float, but we wanna be able to represent this as percentages, so we're gonna multiply everything by 100. So let's go ahead and print out our data frame and see what this looks like now. So we can see here that per state, we're able to see how much as a percentage the population changed between 2020 and 2021. So now that we have our data frame really set up in a nice and meaningful way, we can start working on bringing in the mapping data. So what we want to be able to do for this is actually use GeoPandas in order to be able to read in that file. So we can call this say shape and we can use the GDP read file function here. Well, this should actually GPD. And we can just pass in the file variable that we have up here, so our shape path. And when we do this, let's take a look at what this actually looks like. So we can write print shape. And so what this does is it actually stores everything in a GeoPandas data frame. And this is really helpful because it, there's a lot of overlap in the different methods between a Pandas data frame and a GeoPandas data frame. So really what we wanna be able to do at this point is bring in this new population change value here that we created and be able to bring this into our uh, shape data frame that we can then plot using GeoPandas and matplotlib. So let's see how we can do this. We can see here that this is actually just a data frame underneath the hood. So let's take a look at some of the columns in here. So we can print out the columns again of our shape data frame. So what we get back is that we have a number of different columns down here. So we need to figure out which column represents the state. And so what we can actually do is take a look at these values here and we can take a look at in particular this name column here to see what this actually represents. So we're just gonna access that column here, run our code again. So we can see here that this column actually represents the states. So now that we know this, we can actually merge our data frame into the shape data frame uh, to be able to access those population change values in our shape data frame. So for this, we're just gonna recreate the shape variable, and then we're gonna use the pandas merge function. So on the left side of this, we're gonna have shape. Then on the right side, we're gonna have our data frame. So in order to merge, we need to provide the left on variable, which in this case, we now know to be name. And on the right on, we can bring in our variable state. And so because we only wanna be able to plot 
states for which we actually have geographic information, we're going to use the how equals left parameter here. And this means we're going to do a left join on our two data frames. So let's take a look at what we have now. We're going to print out shape again, and let's access the columns here. So when we take a look at this, we now actually have all of the columns from our data frame df in our shape data frame as well. So this means we can now access those numeric values directly in our shape data frame. So there's a couple of things that we're going to want to do at this point. Uh, well, you first want to explore whether or not we have any missing data. So we want to use the info method. And when we run this, we can actually see how many missing values we have per column. So because this here is our original shape data frame, we know that there should be 56 entries, but we also know that for four of those, we don't actually have values. So rather than trying to find those values for the purposes of this tutorial, we're just going to drop them. So what we can do now is just say shape equals shape, drop an A and run that. So we've now been able to get rid of those missing values. So let's figure out how we can actually map our data frame now. And this is where things get really exciting. So under the hood, GeoPandas is going to still rely on matplotlib in order to be able to provide these visualizations. So we're going to create this axe object here, and we're going to apply to our shape data frame here a boundary plot. And so let's take a look at what this actually looks like. So we're going to create this axe object here using our pandas data frame, our GeoPandas data frame shape and we're going to create a boundary plot. And so what we need to do is again apply the plot method here to our shape GeoPandas data frame. And we're going to pass in our axe. And so at this point, before we customize things in any way, let's pass in the column that we want to map as well. So in this case, we want to map our population change column. So let's run this and see what it looks like using the plot.show method. So when we run this, we can see that we get this map, which to be quite honest, is incredibly ugly right now. So one of the things that we may want to focus in on is really just looking at the continental US. Right now, this is incredibly zoomed out and it actually represents the entire world, but we want to just focus in on the continental US to keep things simple and focused. So the way that we can do this is actually by dropping those columns from our GeoPandas data frame. So let's go ahead and where we were dropping our values here, what we can do is also drop some of those uh, states and territories that we're not interested in mapping right now. So we're going to use this unary operator, operator here, which really just inverses whatever we're selecting. So we're going to pass in Alaska, Hawaii, not Hawaii, and Puerto Rico. And so when we run this now, what we actually get back is this nicely zoomed in version of the map. Now, this already looks a lot better and it's quite informative, but we can really take the styling quite a bit further. For example, one of the things we may want to focus in on is getting rid of these axes as well as the border, uh, the spines around our visualization. We may also want to add a legend as well as modify the color values in this map. Right now, we don't know what yellow represents. We don't know what dark blue represents. And of course, we want to add a title as well. So let's figure out how we can customize a lot of this. So one of the ways in which we can actually control the axis object is by modifying it directly in here. So what we want to do is pass in this edge color piece here, and we're going to pass in black. And this is going to control the edging around each of the shapes. And we're also going to modify the line width because it was a little chunky right now. And then we're also going to pass in a figure size just to be able to make it nice and big. And so let's take a look at how much better our graph is already going to look. So we can now see that the figure itself is much bigger. We've removed a lot of the chunky lines separating the different states, as well as made the lines black rather than that teal color that existed before. 
So now one of the things we want to focus on and on is actually the coloring for each of these values. You may already know that matplotlibs comes with a number of different color maps that allow us to show the distribution in really cool ways. So the color map that we're going to use for this is the red to blue color map, which allows us to visualize values going from red to blue depending on their change. In order to be able to show this in a meaningful way, we'll also want to add a legend. So let's go ahead and do this now. So in order to do this, we're actually going to be working in this shape object here. And so what we want to do is pass in legend equals true. And this is just going to add that legend to it. We also want to add in our color map. And so in this case, we're going to add in the red blue color map. So when we run this, we can actually see that we've now added in our legend and we've added in our color map. So we can see now that the values go from around negative three to positive three. And the darker the blue color is, the larger the population change. And the more red a color was, the lower the population change. So right now, this is still a little unintuitive in my opinion. We want to make sure that these get formatted as decimal places. And maybe what we want to do as well is plot it underneath our graph in a horizontal way to be able to really show that spectrum. So the way that we can do this actually is by using some legend keywords here. And so this may feel a little bit unintuitive, but bear along with me. So we're going to pass in the shrink uh, parameter here, and we're just going to scale it down to 30% of its original size. We're also going to change the orientation. And we're going to say that we want it to be horizontal. And finally, we're going to change the format of this to be a string format where we pass in the percentage here. All right, so now we have our map showing in this beautiful horizontal format where our legend is quite clear and explicit in terms of what the values actually represent. So we still have a bit of work to do. We want to be able to get rid of the actual spines around our graphs as well as the X labels and the Y labels because quite frankly, they don't mean very much in this regard. So let's take a look at how we can do this as well as adding a title to our graph. So what we're going to do is on a new line down here is we're going to use the get x axis method here and we're going to pass in set visible equals to false and we're going to do the exact same thing but for the y axis. So at this point what we now have is everything without the values here on our x and our y axes. So we still actually want to be able to get rid of these spines as well. So the way that we can do this is using a for loop. So we can say for edge in, and we're gonna pass in all of the possible combinations here. So right, bottom, top, and left. And then we're gonna loop over these values and say that we want the ax spines of that particular edge. And we're gonna say set visible equals to false. So when we run this now, we can see that we've removed all of these values here. So now our last step is actually to add a meaningful title to this. And so the way that we can do this is using the axe.setTitle method here. And so what we're going to do is just call this population change in the USA between 2020 and 2021. And we're going to pass in a size of 18 and a weight of bold. So let's run this now and see how what our map looks like. So you can see here that we've actually created something that looks dramatically different from the first instance that we ran. And it's a lot prettier. It's a lot more informative in terms of what the colors actually represent. But we've also been able to add meaningful titles to it as well as really being able to zone in on a particular region of the map to be able to really focus in on the continental US. So I really hope that you learned something from this. Mapping with Python can be incredibly powerful without needing to rely on different external tools. It also gives you a lot of flexibility to expand on your skills in tools like Matplotlib and Pandas. If you enjoyed today's tutorial, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Hit that little bell icon to be notified of when I release new videos just like this one. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.